at Springs. Yeah, springs there, are really wonderful things, and they follow Hooke's Law. And what I'm going to do is have a look at Hooke's Law in a bit more detail. When you studied Hooke's Law, many students looked at this in Year 7, the beginning of their secondary school, and it was a nice, easy little experiment to have a go at, and it came up with some quite easy and good results. Often this is then an experiment that comes back at GCSE as a, a required sort of practical. Again, it's a very easy one to do, but there's a lot more to Hooke's Law than initially meets the eye. What we're going to do is have a look at one spring to remind ourselves of how that works. Then we're going to see what happens if we put them in series, two springs in series or two springs in parallel. And we'll see what happens there as we sort of change what's going on. And maybe we'll have a look at three springs. We'll see what we can do. So let's go over and have a look at this experiment and its setup. And let's see what we can do here. So our setup is really quite simple. I've got a couple of setups here and I'm just going to have a look at one of them, them to start with and that's this far one. Now what I've got with this far one is set up a single spring. Uh, I've got a ruler, uh, it's transparent and this is important because what I've got is a mirror behind it. Now one of the big problems with this experiment is basically trying to get rid of the parallax problem. And to get rid of the parallax problem, what we can do is all sorts of clever things like putting set squares in and trying to get your head level with this. The mirror solves this problem a lot easier. I've got a little line here, a little piece of metal here and just about see that in the video and I've set that up so it's at zero on the ruler because that's going to make the calculations easier and I've got a mirror behind so when I turn this so you can see it perhaps a little bit better let's stop this I need to get my eye up here level with this piece of metal. I can look through there at the ruler till I line it up and I line it up with the back to get rid of the parallax problem. And once I've done that, life is easy. Right, so I've got a 10 gram mass on here to start with and that isn't really doing much to my spring apart from holding it still. So we're going to assume that that's going to be a negligible weight at the moment. What I've got is my iPad and I'm going to use that to record my values as I go. And what I've done on my iPad is I have set up my data ready to record. I've already put in some masses and I can put in the extension. And so I'm going to assume that although I've got a 10 gram mass on here to start with, that I'm going to assume it's zero and perhaps you'll see why later. So at 10 grams, let's put on a 10 gram mass and what I need to then do is stop this moving then I'm going to have to stick my head in the way so I can read this and that's at 2 so we've got an extension of 2 millimetres so I'm just going to put in and I was hoping the iPad would be nice to me and I can put in two right 
let's put on the next one and we can go along a bit quicker now I've got everything set up so this is at 20 getting it that is at 10 millimeters What I need to do is steady this each time, make sure it's not moving up and down, and that is at about 25. this about 38.39 see if I can stop it 54. Now I'm going to have a problem with my mirror in that this is now fallen down so what I'm going to have to do is slide the mirror down, lock it in place, get my head level And that's not so very still, sixty nine. Eighty two, ninety six. bouncing around a bit more than I want it to do and that's a hundred and eleven we don't have to go too far on doing this We'll take it down to a reasonable number, get my head level, and that's one, two, three, one, two, four. And I think we can probably put on another couple of masses. One three nine. I'll 
unfortunately this one's just going to be too low so I'm going to have to adjust it again. One five four. So I've got 120 grams on there and we've got a set of data that is probably quite useful. Now, how do we check this? How do we make this, sort of verify this? What we can do is we can actually reverse this and we can quickly take the weights off and see what happens. So I've got here at the moment 154 so I could do this the other way simply to check and verify my readings and I reckon that's one 40. We had 139 last time. So that is probably just due to me not being able to read it very accurately and doing it fairly quickly. And I reckon 126, we had 124 before. It's useful to give myself some sort of error readings here. And that's 112. We had 111 last time. In a class environment then this is usually fairly easy. I normally get several students to sort of have a look and look at the same data. Getting my head right. 197, uh, 97 and we had 96 last time so we can see that these are fairly consistent I'm within one or two millimeters so it's not going to be that different okay so let's have a look and see what we can do with this data and what I'm going to do is I'm going to literally just undo this one for a minute and get it ready to set up for the next experiment and we'll go over and have a look at this data and see what we can work out from it. So here is the data that I put in. More precisely, More precisely I should, should say, say here are the data that I put in and I've got those. Let's just take this and what we're going to do is I'm going to see if I can try and build a chart and I'm going to do a scatter chart and we'll do it one with some pretty lines on it. I think that sort of one will give us the sort of data and we've got a reasonably straight line there this is not what I want though so I'm just going to take this out and uh, delete it let's that looks better right let's grab that data no it didn't grab it all do it again when my son's standing over me saying 
let me do it with finger I'll do a better job than you will and we'll just insert a chart and I suppose that one will do us nicely and I'm reasonably happy with that that's giving us quite a good straight line going up there so we haven't got many readings that are, are really off okay so let's now try with two springs in series so the setup for this is going to be very very similar except what I'm going to use is a second spring so I've got my first spring and I'm simply going to attach my second spring on here and I am going to need to adjust a little bit here so let's bring my mirror down I'm going to set just one mass on here basically it's enough to try and steady the system and it doesn't seem to make any difference to the extension so we've got that one there and what I now need to do is adjust my ruler right okay so we've got the mass the ruler the mirror they're all in line and that's set at zero so now we've got to try and work out what two springs are going to do are they going to behave in the same way so let's try and see what happens 10 and I'm not honestly seeing any difference so I'm going to set that to zero and we have got some difference here this is 14 millimeters I'm going to have to move the mirror down Sixty-three, sixty-four. 
just trying to get to stabilize About 90, I do say about 90, it's moving around a little bit. We'll need to move the mirror down fractionally too much. Right, so if you followed that down with me, you can probably just about read what that's going to be. I'm reckoning on here, it's about 11.6, 116, and you're getting a very different value. Now, why is that? Parallax I hear you calling out, yes, the camera is significantly higher than this if I come down, my hand's going way below where the camera is, we're sort of about 40 centimetres higher. So let's put the next one on, and we can always already see some sort of trend going on now. Much harder to get this to sort of balance and stop. Sometimes we found that a ruler can be better than a hand. And looking at this I'm on about one four six. So at seventy grams we're at one four six, whereas at one hundred and twenty grams on the other one we're at one five four. So we are making a significant change in the extension. It's almost like both springs are extending the same amount and we do have quite a lot of bounce here trying to get it to stop is quite difficult One seven five. It's oscillating between one seven three and one seven five. One seven four, we'll call this one. So we're putting on ninety grams now, and a. Again, I'm going to have to adjust the mirror. And it's a case of trying to get my head at the right level. This is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, two, three, sorry. Not reading the scale properly. Two, two, three. Coming up on 100 grams. So 
So we've got about 225, 225. Yeah, and looks like I got that now. Let's get that right. I had my head in the wrong position. Trying to get the numbers matching. Yeah, I've got 230. I don't like the look of those two last ones. I'm going to take one off and go back and do that reading again. I have a feeling I got it wrong. Yes, I did. I can immediately see where I went wrong. That was two, not two, two three, but two o oh, three. So let's put that other one back and put one more on there. We've got two more readings to go. Gonna have to lower the mirror again. And that's two six zero. And finally We've got two eight eight, I think two eight eight, two eight seven, two eight seven. So I'll just take the weights off, return that to as it was, and that is the two single springs done. We could look at three, but we'll have a look at the results of this and see. So here are our figures. Let's just take this and let's insert a chart and again I'm going to go for a scatter chart I'm not sure that did what I wanted it to do let's just delete that one that is right so let's insert a chart, scatter graph. Let's try that one. There we are. And what I've got is that data showing a nice straight line. So my ideas weren't too bad. It's not right quite at the bottom but then our previous one also had exactly that same problem so we've got this extension going but we'll have to try and examine why that happened but before we do that what I want to do is I want to go and have a look at parallel springs. So let's have a look at some parallel springs. And to do that, I'm going to use a different experiment. So I'm just going to take this one out of the way. And we're going to bring in this other experiment. 
Now this one I've got a metal rod and suspended from this metal rod we've got two springs and then I've got a bar connecting them it's set at zero and let's see what happens as we put some masses on here. Now I've come prepared here because I've actually brought more masses. I already feel for this that I might need some more masses to have a go at doing this. So let's have a go and see what happens. Good start. Taking my first reading, we've got 0.3, so 3 millimetres. I'm sorry I have to put my head in the way. The only way I can try and do this, you've just moved the camera so you've got a better viewpoint. And we're going down and I'm making this at about 0.6, 6 millimetres. I'm just going to adjust the weight a bit more centre. So let's put that one in. The next mass. And getting that in, we're on 14, I think. I don't know what you think on there. Whether your level, you can see. Paul's just going to see if he can zoom in. I'm looking at the bottom of the bar. another one on and I'm reckoning on that being about twenty one So we're up to 50 grams now and I reckon that's about 29. Can you see any pattern that's going on here? So with the same system we had 54 on one spring, two springs were on 29 with the same mass so up at 60 grams I'm at yeah about 35 Trying to get the mass in the centre so the rod doesn't sort of move too much and 45, 40, 43, back 43. I think I'm going to have to move this mirror down does alter the sort of balance of the system
so I'm trying to get my head level that's on 50 So now on 90 grams, sixty-seven, sixty-seven. Let's take it to a hundred grams. Sixty-four, seventy-four, no, sixty-four. I always get worried when I see that that uh, I've got a numbers that are wrong. That suggests that had to be fifty-seven. That previous one, and I can immediately see it was. And this is now 110. And I'm looking here at about 70. One seventy-one. I'm happy with seventy-one. And we'll try just one more, taking it up to one hundred and twenty grams, which is consistent with what we've done with all the others. I can just about get this mass on here. And now I'm looking at about seventy-nine. Okay, so I'm just going to take the masses off there and let's have a look at our results. So let's go and have a look at the graph of this. And again, we're getting a nice straight line showing that Hooke's Law is working. Now, all we've got to do is try and explain what's going on when we've got series and we've got parallel lines. So, let's have a look. Well, Hooke's Law, we know, is the force applied equals something which we're going to call K, the spring constant, times the change in length, our extension. So this is our spring constant times our extension. So I could, for this, quite happily work out what this spring is, this spring constant is, for a particular force that we've applied to get this extension. And remember when I've done this, I've extended and put my things down and measured in millimetres, as opposed to anything else and we're measuring here all the masses in grams adding 10 grams on at a time so we do know that when we take a spring we can extend it so much but once it gets beyond a certain amount 
it gets stretched beyond its elastic limit and it doesn't regain its initial length when you play around with it and many students have in fact probably met this in A-level maths as well and uh, that they use a slightly different formula so we can use this to try and work out things but what I want to do is I want to worry about not basic Hooke's law which is this one but let's have a look what happens if we've got springs in series now what were we seeing in series well comparing our data basically it was nearly doubling you know 154287 it's sort of approximately double so that is suggesting that in series if we've got spring A connected to spring B then if I look at a normal graph this spring A will extend by a certain amount let's say X if we put the two together then this one will also expand by X which is approximately 2x so we're looking here at that sort of idea because we know the tension in the springs will basically be the same and we know that the weight that we've put on which is our mass times gravity will in fact also be the same as before so if each spring is expanding by the same amount then we expect to get double the length and indeed that's what we're finding so if we want to try and work out what we're doing the force needed to stretch one spring is going to be F equals this for one spring. So let's call this the primary spring. And the force next to the secondary spring. Assuming that these two springs have in fact the same spring constant then the weight here is going to equal those two which is going to equal this one plus that one and that basically is where we are so our new spring constant if you like that the double spring constant is going to equal the primary plus the secondary so that seems to be what we're seeing and if these two springs are the same then that's the way it's working if the two springs have different spring constants and you'll see that I went to some effort to make sure that the two springs I got were as similar as possible then basically I'm hoping the two spring constants would be the same so we can see that if we've got the total extension this is going to equal the extension for the primary and the extension for the secondary spring and we can work out 
quite simply that one of those, the change in the length yeah, for the primary would be W now over KP. The same for the other one, which is delta L secondary is going to be the W over K secondary. So we can work out now that the change in length is going to equal the mass over Kp plus the same mass over Ks, the secondary one, which will give me that over this new one, the double. So I can say 1 over K is going to be 1 over the primary plus 1 over the secondary. So that's my springs in series and we've got this idea that if we've got my springs in parallel then we need just to rework what we've got here to say that this is what they're going to be in parallel and this is what we're going to have in series and you've got the data so you could have a go at working that out if you want to. If we want to look at the elastic potential energy stored in this system, then this is going to equal a half the force times the extension. And we can redo that one as a half K extension squared. So therefore we can manage to work out quite a lot about this spring. So the energy in the spring we have to remember is a half the force times the change in length, the extension. Well, there was a fair bit there looking at springs. They're not very difficult. And what we can then look at is taking this a little bit further and trying perhaps out some more dangerous, if you like, experiments we can start looking at the next one about stress and strain. We can look at this thing called tensile strength and tensile stress. And we can look at that using something called... He's forgotten. Uh, one of these... Uh, pieces of apparatus to do the stress and strain. Uh, there are various bits and pieces. There is Searle's equipment that we can do this to work out Young's modulus. And so we'll have a go at trying that one next time. Until then, if you found this useful, then please subscribe and I will see you again next week when we'll have a look at some more physics topic by topic. Stay safe. Bye-bye.